Welcome to this short tutorial on uh, concurrent managers and keeping uh, on top of the concurrent requests, making sure that those critical requests that uh, may trip up further down the line process are uh, under control. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, what tools we can use, which toolkit, uh, and we do that through the Blitz report. So I'll just start by uh, logging or getting into System Administrator. As you can see from the menu here, we've got Blitz Report installed. It's fully integrated with, with Oracle EBS anyway and works with versions uh, 11 and 12. Um, and I'm, I'm going to start the Blitz Report. This is, uh, <clears throat> I've logged in as a developer. So um, if we click in as, uh, as a developer, we've got setup and the ability to create queries. I'm just going to call back a, one that uh, we created earlier. Uh, this is a seeded report which comes uh, with the free Blitz software um, and the one I'm interested in are the concurrent requests. So um, as we can see here, uh, this is uh, basically a query that's going to check all the running scheduled uh, historic requests and, and all different phases and statuses and, and uh, has a number of parameters which we'll, uh, we'll talk about which are really handy for finding issues uh, within your concurrent requests and then sending an email with an Excel sheet attached uh, is very straightforward. Um, let's just uh, have a look at, uh, so the SQL's there, it's uh, been developed over a number of years, it, it's uh, pretty good. Um, it it uh, will also give you the parameters, um, so when you run it, it, it will translate those as well, which is a fairly good thing to do. Um, I'll, I'll go through how the parameters are created. So these are the parameters that have been added. So we've got concurrent name, we've got the, um, the program module itself, um, we've got things like the request ID requested by, whether it was started within a number of days, uh, whether it's scheduled or is running, whether it's been waiting. Uh, whether it's a, a long time runner, uh, we can put a number of minutes in there. Um, and then we've got other things that uh, like the request set name, uh, what was the method of execution, uh, and we'll go through those in a bit more detail. Uh, which node it was running on, for example, and you know, different timestamps, date stamp ranges. And uh, one of the ones that's particularly useful is the incremental alert mode, which is so if you're running this multiple times a day, um, you don't want to keep reporting on the same uh, concurrent request that's failing. So it will, it will actually do an incremental check to see when the last request failed. And then obviously if it's already reported on those, then it will drop them off the list. So you don't get bombarded with uh, repeat requests. Very, very handy. Uh, assignments, well, this has been assigned to the application object library. You can assign this anywhere. Um, as, as I mentioned, we're in developer mode. Uh, and hence uh, we can pretty much do anything at this stage, but the users would just have the ability to run this. But in any case, this is probably a, a request that's in the hands of a database administrator or a system administrator type person, support, etc. cetera. Um, let's just go through some things. We've got here version control, uh, very important. Uh, so you can keep the version of all the SQLs uh, and you can put comments again against each one. So as things change uh, over the development cycle, uh, we've got uh, different uh, statuses and we keep hold of the uh, old SQL. Um, the categorization here allows you to, um, to group these requests uh, or at least these uh, blitz reports. Uh, and as you can see here, there's a whole host of uh, Nginatics uh, uh, blitz reports uh, and they're categorized. So there's 190-ish that come with the uh, with the seeded version of Blitz report, uh, which, as I mentioned, is shareware for the first uh, 30 reports anyway. So it, it could be something you want to try. Um, there's many different things you can do with, with Blitz report. For example, you can import Discoverer, you can bring in BI Publisher, and it will bring in the parameters, the assignments, and the SQL. So it, it's a very flexible tool. And obviously, if you've got a, a raft of SQLs of your own, you can register these. Now, it all goes through the concurrent manager, but there's only one request called the, the Blitz report, so one function. Um, and all of these uh, SQLs are held within a table, Blitz uh, report table. So there's there's no registration hassle to go through very fast to, to develop. Um, so let's just go ahead and run it uh, and then we'll, we'll see the parameters. Um, 
here first and foremost uh, I'll just click into here and I'll show you some of the the additional features you can do as a user you have the ability to template um, the columns so if you're bombarded with uh, too many columns um, you see here we've got uh, available columns and then we've got displayed columns uh, down this side so this particular user <laughs> is not displaying anything but um, what you would do is you'd simply pick the ones you want to bring across and then you just bring them over so you can see here we've got quite, quite a lot of flexibility uh, to bring in uh, or, or remove various columns. Um, I'm not going to do that, so let me just close that away. Um, other things you can do, um, obviously you can send the output by email. So that's, that's a very straightforward thing to do. Um, and again, you would do that within the uh, setup of, of this particular template. You can put multiple emails in here and you can choose what kind of output you want to send. Uh, most, most people are happy with sending an Excel file, but of course you may want different uh, capabilities. Uh, I'll just pop my uh, my email address in here uh, so that this would go to me, uh, and uh, we would then schedule this uh, on the concurrent uh, manager in the usual way. Default is uh, Excel anyway, uh, and let me just close that. Okay, so we've got uh, here, uh, like I said, uh, We've got our template called key user. We've got our email address in here. Um, if we were to look at that now, you see here I've sent across those columns there. Um, I would just send across the rest of them. Uh, let's just multi-select these and bring them all across. Uh, so we've got the whole report in front of us. I think that's probably better. I'll just hold the shift key down and we'll send those over there. Uh, there's a few more to go. Pop them across and that's finished so save that um, you can make it public or not so it could be that um, you you want to share the template with different users or they may have their own uh, you may wish to not give the user this capability um, as I said this type of report tends to be a key user or super user anyway uh, so we go ahead and close that um, in terms of the parameters, we've got the ability to multi-select. So um, what we could do is we can select in here and then we can select uh, from our, you know, our different uh, reports. I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Um, for example, we can put in a couple of reports here. Um, and let's have a look what we've got. Um, auto. So you see here we've got a whole raft of things in here we could select. Reconciliation auto invoice master program, that's always a good one. Um, maybe you've got an important planning uh, job, usual things like uh, a memory based planner or something like that uh, is a good one if, you, if you're using planning, um, or, or indeed any of the programs that you've, you find criticality with that you need to monitor. Um, so this is a memory based planner here. Let's pop that one in there as well. Um, so all the way through you can multi-select, um, you could use the short module name, um, you could say okay was it how long was it started within, um, so you could say started within today for example. Um, scheduled or running so you can pick out different statuses um, and whether it was waiting for you know a period of time. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the status we'd probably want to multi-select here so um, we're interested in, you know, status of uh, error, um, probably warning, possibly, um, but you could, you know, you can select those there. So I just thought I'd show you those. Um, next, we've got uh, whether you want to display the parameters. Now, that, that's what I was mentioning before. So we do a full translation on the parameters. So very often when you look at the parameters, you see ones and noughts, and it's difficult to know what uh, it's referring to. So we translate those into something more meaningful. Um, there's also a profile report that does something very similar. So, you know, again, when we look to see what the meaning of values and profile values, it, it does all of that translation for you in a similar way. Um, you've got all these different uh, delivery options. You can uh, also record the session um, SQL text, uh, which is handy. This, the actual session uh, SQL ID is in there as well, um, so that you can run them through. We've got a number of uh, database performance uh, tuning um, reports as well. And as you walk through here, we see there's an explanation of the parameters in the status bar down here. 
so you know if you're unsure obviously we've got a manual as well but uh, we keep a we keep the message down here uh, just so that you know what's uh, <laughs> what it means and then down here this this is the one i was mentioning earlier which is um when you select this one it's uh we've got this wrap function on which is pretty handy as well so in the incremental alert mode um this this particular parameter here is um it's basically only showing the re request since the last scheduled report run. Now that's pretty good. If you're running this every half an hour, you probably only want to see those requests that, that, that happened since the last time. So you can jump on them and uh, especially towards uh, month end, you probably want to be ensuring that these uh, worked on in a, in a timely fashion. Let's go ahead and run it. Now I'm not sure if I've got any error reports, but let's see, uh, we'll see what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> Uh, hopefully the, uh, the the report it goes through the concurrent manager. Uh, you see the status there was going to running uh, pending schedule, etc. The usual uh, things, and obviously the the uh, selection criteria I put in here is uh, clearly not uh, picking anything up. So I'll just pop that one out because I haven't run this job earlier. Um, the other thing is uh, I haven't run any concurrent uh, requests of type auto invoice, so I'll, I'll just blank those out as well. Um, and then I'm going to remove this one. But I just wanted to go through those parameters with you. Um, now we'll run it and hopefully we will have a, an output that you can view. Um, and this will just take, a, as I said, you see the status here running as uh, it goes through all of the standard concurrent uh, statuses. And this will then deliver directly to Excel. It could, of course, uh, be emailed. As I mentioned, uh, we've got, uh, I pop my email in there as well. So while this is uh, generating, uh, explain that. Now, <clears throat> here we've got um, uh, the request ID, the priority, the parent, so in case it was scheduled from a parent. Um, we've got all of the good stuff around, um, you know, which particular program was running. You see here we were doing some ECC work earlier. Um, and across here, we've got uh, the username, uh, what was the outcome, uh, which responsibility triggered it, um, and what, what time it started, how many seconds it ran for. Um, and here's the parameter that I was mentioning. You've got all the parameter translation from here. And then over to the right, we've got a whole raft of other columns um, that, uh, for example, waiting, um, what type of output it was. Uh, and then over to the right still, we've got the log file, the output file, um, and then keeping going across to the right, you see here, we've got the instance, we've got, uh, all of the good things you would expect, whether there were conflicts, uh, how long it was waiting in that conflict, um, and then what the short name of the executable, uh, execution file name, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's a, there's a raft of information there, and I didn't put the SQL um, in there because I, I wasn't looking uh, to do that, but uh, obviously you could have done that, and then you could have picked it up in one of our DBA tuning uh, reports. So. That's the, the Blitz report. Um, as I said, uh, there's a whole library. We, we're running a, a shareware, uh, a shareable library where you can upload your own um, your own SQLs as well. Um, we also, as I said, out of the box, we, we, we have approximately 190 uh, reports. They're very straightforward to create uh, a new report yourself. Um, you just drop the SQL in here. Um, you then, you can reuse parameters from all of the Blitz reports. So generally speaking, 99% of the parameters are already there. Uh, it's just a question of coming down here and then you can just double click and you can pick up any, uh, re any reports parameter. So it's got the entire uh, Oracle standard uh, parameters. There's also the Blitz reports parameters, concurrent requests, the ones for BI, etc. They're all there. And then you just simply uh, accept and uh, then that parameter is matched uh, into the uh, SQL. So the matching element is obviously the column name and the table alias there. Okay, so that was all I wanted to show you today and thank you uh, for listening. Uh, if you want to find out more and uh, visit our demonstration try for yourself on, on the nginatics.com uh, website. Um, also, we have uh, a YouTube channel where you can see a number of these videos. Thank you.